As far as we see, our dialogue between Belarus and the European Union is uh, improving. And uh, how could you assess, uh, in general, the perspective of cooperation between the European Parliament and Belarusian parliamentarians? What are the main fields of cooperation? Maybe? Well, I think uh, we have to find a way how to bring the Parliament of Belarus to the Euronist Assembly as well. You could see here in the House, I was really positively surprised how many people started to say, yeah, we have to do something with them. We, we all, I for sure think, nothing gets better if you don't speak with, with each other. So this is our problem as well with uh, Russia, for example, mm -hmm. that here a majority doesn't like to speak uh, too much with uh, our Russian counterparts. And I think this is totally wrong. So we have to find something. We can do that in the Euronest Assembly. We can do that on a bilateral basis because uh, our disputes or our different opinions to, to some points, they will stay, of course. But uh, you have to discuss it. You have to speak about that. You have to build up a common ground on which on the one hand side, our common interests are better defined and, and, and then also taken into account. And on the other side, we also have to discuss if we want to become partner, that at least fair elections and so on should be possible. But you don't get neither the one side nor the other side if we don't communicate. That's for sure. This. And do you have any contacts with the Belarusian parliamentarians? Not really. Uh, I was never in Belarus until now and would like to make my own picture maybe in the second half of this year. I met the ambassador here and we had a quite frank and a good uh, little discussion here around this table. There are some members in our political group who are really interested to improve the relations. And I think we should find a way how to do this and that not in years, but maybe in this year. Mm -hmm. so how influential your party is in the uh, European Parliament? Now? Well, we are only the second biggest group. We have 189 uh, members, so that is about 30 less than e EPP. We are influential, but it always depends that you find in other groups uh, uh, friends who support this uh, way as well. I could imagine that the left, the GUE, the left group uh, will support that also. With the Greens it's always a bit difficult mm -hmm. on the human rights issues which are also our issues, but the way how to discuss that is a bit different. They are more the protesting ones. I would like to be more the discussing ones. And how do you assess the future of uh, European Union after Brexit, uh, as a representative of the most influential and biggest party, and also uh, Germany is said to be a locomotive of uh, European economy? Can, uh, well. First of all, we, we never had this case that somebody left the, the European Union and it's now a bit tricky how to deal with this Brexit because some hundred thousand working places on both sides are dependent on a mm -hmm. smart approach. On the one hand side, it must be very clear that if you are not a member of the club, you can't have all benefits of the club or you have to pay for. On the other side, uh, it should not be like a disappointed lover with uh, two bad feelings. In fact, 33 years, the relation between United Kingdom and European Union was not clear. Now it is. I see in, in Germany, in the political class, in my party, for example, it was not so bad that they decided this way because it woke up the others who were, or were a bit sleepy. 
and it shows certainly that we have to change a lot in our rules, which is very difficult, as we don't have all the same vision where to. But uh, on the other side, you see how they discuss, how they deal with each other. It's much more positive than it was before. Because also people know, I don't know whether you know that in some hundred cities, every Sunday at two o'clock people meet in my city, Hamburg. They started with 100 people, now they are with 1,500, 2,000, uh, and in others even more. Me to show, hey, there's enough room for criticism. A lot of things doesn't work fine, but uh, politicians pay attention. We don't want to lose the project. And this is also encouraging in a way because we had this attitude that everything is bad and mm -hmm. nobody had a real suggestion how to continue, but all knew it's all Brussels and bad. And especially the governments and the member states loved it to make here in the council the conclusions and going back shouting on Brussels. <laughs> And this is a bit gets a bit better. Also, the white book of the Commission, which is nothing else than to ask uh, the member states and the Parliament, where do we want to go? Here are five possibilities, mm -hmm. and I'm very sure that uh, that leads to a discussion which is awfully uh, necessary, and I think will bring us uh, step by step in the right direction. Needs time. But if I would have liked it more easy, I would be a member of the National Parliament. And that I tell my, my German colleagues from time to time. <laughs> some are laughing, some feel this is not appropriate. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you.